God is actually going to suspend time and everything will stop. And he's going to allow everyone to see their soul and their sins as he sees them. There's going to be a physical miracle gap back in Garavandel. And Conchita is going to give the world an eight-day notice of the actual day that that miracle is going to take place. It's going to take place on a Thursday night at 8.30 uh, Spanish time. Um, so uh, I, I believe that I'll be one of the one of the first phone calls, and then I'll be reaching out through uh, media connections and and obviously the internet and websites um, and and several other people that are going to help me, and we're going to disperse that message as quickly as possible. Excellent, excellent. So. Her role in the future is sort of set up as well, but not till after the world experiences something that will probably eclipse anything the world has jointly experienced before in the warning. If you could go through with us just briefly, what's the warning again? The warning is going to be uh, a day uh, that God is actually going to suspend time and everything will stop. And he's going to allow everyone to see their soul and their sins as he sees them. Um, which is going to be quite a quite a wake up call for for all of us, I think, uh, regardless of where our faith is, um, because it's not only the sins that we've committed, it's the gravity of the sin as he sees it, not as we see it. And then also he's going to show us sins of omission. So there are things that we've done that we may not even have realized that have hurt God and and have hurt other people. Um, so this is going to be a, a I think a somewhat terrifying day for, for all of us, um, but especially those people who have no faith or or are you know atheists. Uh, I, I I pray for them because it's it's going to be uh, quite an interesting day for everybody. And I think all the uh, priests might be dreading this. I think the confession lines are going to be extensive for days and weeks <laughs> afterwards. But it, it is. It does does propose an incredible opportunity for evangelization and, and turnaround in people's lives. Was there any indication of how it will be received and what will happen in the world in terms of turnaround after that? Unfortunately, no. And, you know, that's, that's free will. Uh, God gives everyone free will. And so uh, this is really what, in Garabandel's prophecy, was called the conditional chastisement. So if the world doesn't show uh, repentance uh, in, in great enough numbers, uh, I fear that we may have to suffer this uh, punishment, this chastisement, in order to cleanse the world of, of the, the unbelievers. And um, I just hope it doesn't happen. I'd like to hear your take on the end of times as you see them playing out with, you know, after speaking with Conchita for a long time, as you have. Um, do you have any thoughts on how this is going to play out after? Well, I, I think that we're fairly close. And uh, in one of her uh, documented uh, quotes, she had indicated to a friend of hers, and this was many years ago, this was um, many, many years ago in the 60s. She said that when the year 2000 comes, you know, we'll be, we'll be starting to get close. So. You know, it can't be too much further away. Uh, she's going to be 74 years old next month. So she's getting older. And, and all of the prophecies uh, that talked about this have already started to come to fruition. So one of them was a, 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 a very important synod. And obviously the one that we have now is, is very important. And, and it's unique because of the length of it. Um, they uh, had indicated when communism returns again, and you can see the influence of communism throughout the world. And the last prophecy was the Pope going to Moscow. So in my view, we've got two of the three. We're waiting for the Pope to go to Moscow, which sounds like it, it could be fairly soon, hopefully. And then we're going to experience this difficult period, this tribulation period, where there's going to be more hostilities and I'm, I'm sure more disruptions around the world. And then, you know, fortunately, when it gets to its worst, God will stop everything with a warning. And there should be an era of peace 
because he'll bring the miracle so that the world can see it and confirm the messages that Mary gave us at Garavandel. Hey, my friends, are you still looking for a Christmas gift for that someone special on your list who seems to have everything? Well, have I got something for you? We've got these beautiful silver rounds. They're one ounce of pure silver. And on it is, of course, a picture of LifeSite commemorating our 25th anniversary, but also the anniversary of the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Perfect little gift for that person on your list who has everything. God bless you. The purpose of the warning is not to cause us to fear, but to bring us closer to him and to increase our faith. If the world does not change after the miracle, a chastisement will come. Conchita says, If we do not change, the chastisement will be horrible. Loli, Jacinta and I have seen it. Probably one of the most interesting parts about these particular apparitions is that a lot of the events connected with them are captured on film. So you can watch the little children walking around uh, backwards and forwards over rocky ground, but looking straight up in the air. So that's, you know, somewhat miraculous all by itself because they're not tripping and doing all sorts of things. Um, take a look at that. Take a look at a short clip of that actual walking. In October of 1961, the Blessed Virgin Mary revealed to Conchita the great miracle. Later, she also told the other three. Conchita says that it will be a Thursday at 8.30 p.m. and will last 15 minutes, but a visible sign will remain in the pines until the end of times. It will coincide with the great event in the church. The sick who are in Garabandal will be cured. The sinners will convert and the unbelievers will believe. Conchita will announce the date of the miracle eight days in advance. In order to prepare us for the great miracle, a supernatural warning coming directly from God will occur. The warning will appear in the sky and will be visible to the whole world. It will be understood by everyone at the same time, regardless of their state of life or knowledge of God. It will be a terrible experience, but it will be for the well-being of the souls because we will see interiorly, in our conscience, the good and the evil we have done. God desires our salvation. The purpose of the warning is not to cause us to fear, but to bring us closer to Him and to increase our faith. If the world does not change after the miracle, a chastisement will come. Conchita says, If we do not change, the chastisement will be horrible. Loli, Jacinta and I have seen it but I cannot say what it consists of. Also, during the visions, during these visions that the children saw, there are some really interesting things that happened. So one of them is they would give these objects, they would give rosaries to Our Lady uh, to kiss and so on. And <clears throat> once they were presented with an item to have Our Lady kiss, and it was... Uh, what looked like a compact used for makeup, you know. Um, and the children were wondering if they should really present such an object to Our Lady. And, um, well, I'll let you watch what happens. And this is from the film on Garabandel. Take a look. On a certain occasion, the girls were surprised to find a powder compact among the objects to be kissed by the Blessed Virgin. They doubted whether to present to her a seemingly secular object. But when the Blessed Virgin arrived, the first thing she asked to kiss was that compact, saying that it belonged to her son. When the ecstasy ended, the owner of the compact revealed that during the Spanish Civil War, the compact had been used to take the Eucharist to prisoners and to those who were about to be executed. During the ecstasies, our little protagonists always brought a crucifix which they offered to the onlookers to venerate. They normally held out the crucifix to whomever the Blessed Virgin indicated to the girls. After an ecstasy, Conchita found out that those who had kissed the crucifix, though they weren't dressed as priests, were in reality priests. So also, the main visionary Conchita, um, and we've been talking with her close friend Glenn Hudson, 
but she was able to explain for herself about the warning, the uh, miracle, and the chastisement. She did so on television shows, as we just heard Glenn say. I wanted to give you a little bit of that so you hear it in her own words. Have a listen. That uh, she said uh, the sacrifice, the penance, she said um, with uh, the more and more we don't have no respect of the Holy Eucharist. And then uh, he said, uh, pray for the priest, vicious a cardinal, but they go to the wrong way and they bring a lot of salt with them. And they say to uh, think a lot in the passion of Jesus. And um, as to Jesus forgiving us with sincere heart, but he, he want to forgive us. All right. I like to say better hair walls, but you know. That's all right. Now, now, what, what, what will the miracle eventually be? The blessed mother say one miracle gonna happen, but only I can say eight days before. The beast that comes up out of the earth looks like a servant of Christ, the Lamb, but is a servant of Satan, the dragon. Thus. If the second beast is ecclesiastical Freemasonry, it is personified and literally elevated to the summit in the false prophet as its head. There is a prophecy of St. Francis of Assisi in an authentic and renowned source, in which he, that's St. Francis of Assisi, speaks of the appearance of an apostate antipope in the time of tribulation. It says, quote, that someone who is not canonically elected and is infected with heretical wickedness at the turning point of that tribulation raised to the papacy would make a refined effort to give many the death of his error to drink, end quote. Also, it is in this sense that in our time, St. Padre Pio, has entrusted to his spiritual son the famous exorcist, and now late exorcist, Don Gabriele Amorth, the following dramatic words, and I quote, It is Satan who has entered the womb of the church, and within a short while he will rule over a false church, end quote. Saint Padre Pio knew the third secret of Fatima. It had actually been revealed to him four years before the little shepherds. You're going to want to check out the reference on that one. And Father Unterhalt continues, The well-known Spanish journalist José María Zavala asked Don Gabriele Amorth about it in more detail and summarized the conclusion of the dialogue as follows, quote, There were two recurring and interrelated themes. The great apostasy in the Church from its apex in accordance with the testimony of Cardinal Chiappi and the introduction of the devil to the head of the church by means of a pope under the control of Satan, end quote. In this context, Zavala referred to the exact correspondence of these words to the statement of Frère Michel, a great expert on the message of Fatima and author of a trilogy on the subject. He stated, now this is Frère Michel, quote, It will be the time of the decisive battle between the Virgin and the Devil. A flood of diabolical confusion will spread through the world. Satan will penetrate the highest levels of the Church. This will be the great apostasy announced for the last days. The false prophet who betrays the Church in favor of the beast, according to the prophecy of the Apocalypse, end quote. In fact, as Sister Lucia herself pointed out, this secret is revealed in the last book of the Holy Scripture. And in that book, the book of the Apocalypse, there is talk of the fiery red dragon. You'll read that in Apocalypse 12.3. Which is manifest in atheistic communism and of also, the book speaks of, the black beast in Apocalypse 13.1-2, which represents Freemasonry. Then it says, quote, Another beast came up out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the power of the first beast before his eyes. It made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast. And that's from Apocalypse 13, 11 to 12. The beast, which looks like a lamb, represents the ecclesiastical Freemasonry that has penetrated into the interior of the temple. 
especially into the hierarchy. Its goal is to overcome the Catholic Church from within. It wants and achieves, for a short time, the creation of an idol, a false Christ, and a false church. The reference to the hierarchy of the church is crucial, in which the mitre, with two horns, indicates the fullness of the priesthood. The beast that comes up out of the earth looks like a servant of Christ, the Lamb, but is a servant of Satan, the dragon. Thus, if the second beast is ecclesiastical Freemasonry, it is personified and literally elevated to the summit in the false prophet as its head, who is expressly designated as such in three passages of the Apocalypse. Apocalypse 16, 13, 19, 20, and 20, 10. The famous message of La Salette echoes like a loud and insistent warning, quote, Rome will lose the faith and become the seat of the Antichrist. The second beast's mission is the unlimited seizure of power by the first. For this purpose, it is ordered and equipped by the first. It is to lead people to recognize the first as what it claims to be, namely God himself. All his propaganda aims at this in words and deeds. It is a matter of religiously transfiguring the world of power of the Antichrist and getting mankind to pay him cultic veneration in turn. End quote. Bishop Schick accordingly speaks of a satanic trinity. It consists of the dragon and the two beasts. The first beast, which represents Freemasonry, is personified in the Antichrist. And the second, which represents ecclesiastical Freemasonry, in the false prophet. Their goal is the unrestricted rule of the world, the kingdom of the devil on earth. And I quote, The rulers of the world, who had placed themselves in the service of the Satanic Trinity, believe that the favorable opportunity has come to lead together the final destructive strike against the Church of Christ on earth. The satanic triad doubles its propaganda for this purpose." End quote. Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen made it clear in this context that this agenda is marked by the establishment of a counter-church. I quote, It will have all the notes and characteristics of the Church, but in reverse and emptied of its divine content. There will be a mystical body of the Antichrist which will resemble in all its externals the mystical body of Christ. End quote. Accordingly, an anti-church, as its head necessarily needs, an anti-pope, who is the false prophet of the Apocalypse. The hostile aspiration wants to seduce people to, quote, accept a new religion without the cross, a liturgy without the hereafter, a religion to destroy religion, or a politics that is a religion." End quote from Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, the great German mystic, has seen and described the rise of the pernicious anti-church. She, quote, saw how another dark church arose in Rome, and end quote there. In doing so, she used a drastic term that clearly demonstrates the apocalyptic extent of the event. Quote, but the whole house was dark and black, and all that happened in it was darkness and gloom. I also saw how very bad the consequences of this after church would be. I saw it grow. I saw many heretics of all ranks go to the city. End quote. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich also saw the closure of the churches and the great distress of the Catholic communities everywhere. She described the spread of, quote, the dark after church, end quote, as an implementation of the anti-Christian decisive struggle. Quote, the sect receives its signature from the apocalyptic beast, which, risen from the sea, dwells with it and drives to it to fight against the flock of Christ." End quote. 
Against the background of this apocalyptic period, the famous message of La Salette echoes like a loud and insistent warning, quote, Rome will lose the faith and become the seat of the Antichrist, end quote. 